Anything to say about the yearbook, sir? Local media discovered Virginia's Senate Majority Leader Tommy Norman was the managing editor of a college yearbook in 1968, which included images of blackface. This after Virginia's governor faced questions about his yearbook page from 1984 and is now under pressure to resign. And the state's attorney general, also a Democrat, revealed he too had appeared in blackface years ago. Blackface has long been used by white people across North America to depict black people as backward, lazy, or worse. And today, a top Democrat in Washington denounced the images. The history of blackface in this country is um, the history of racism in this country, the history of slavery in this country. And so how are people in Virginia reacting? Paul Hunter went to find out. At Richmond, Virginia's Union University, a school where more than 90% of the students are black, a church service today to help everyone try to make sense of something so ugly and hurtful that it demands a fierce response. We're not reacting to an act, we're reacting to what the act represents. Among the speakers, civil rights activist Al Sharpton on the ugliness in question. Blackface represents a deeper problem where people felt they could dehumanize and humiliate people based on their inferiority. That their own state governor wore blackface as a student, he said, is not only racist, it's a betrayal. After all, the governor ran on a platform of inclusivity, elected by all to be fair to all. Because if you can mock us, then you can legislate and govern against us and nobody will care. Indeed, outside the church, the view is it's all evidence white politicians play black Americans for votes. Too often, individuals that come to campaign, it's a song and dance. They campaign everywhere else. On the last Sunday before election uh, day, they go to the biggest black church they can find. Uh, they get rallied behind the NAACP, and that's how they have been trapping us. Almost exactly 400 years since the first slave ships arrived in America, landing in Virginia, it's clear the state still grapples with that old problem of race. And it's hardly just black Americans who struggle with what to make of their governor and others caught up in this. How do you feel about what's going on at your state capitol? I'm embarrassed, um, and as a Virginian, I am ashamed. I'm, I'm ashamed to be a Virginian. Back at that church service, speaker after speaker reminded everyone they cannot be silent on this. And the only way that the enemy can be scattered is that we expose this. And once it's exposed, once we acknowledge that we can dispose of it. Good, how are you? Said Sharpton, the bottom line is the governor must go. 400 years ago, it was slave traders. Don't get down in the capital 400 years later and become blackface traders. So, Paul, beyond the people we saw in your story, you spoke to, to a lot of residents and anger we heard. What about surprise? Yeah, well, I mean, certainly people were surprised that the governor has acknowledged being in blackface. I mean, as I say in the piece, um, he effectively campaigned on inclusivity. It was part of his political brand. It was a big reason uh, so many people, black and white, voted him into office. So are people surprised the governor has done that? Uh, yeah. Um, but are black people surprised that the attitudes behind that persist in this country 400 years later? No. I mean, there's evidence of it in you know, yearbook after yearbook that's emerging, uh, in every underfunded school in a black neighborhood, every underfunded housing project in a black neighborhood, every, every interaction with police, it seems. I mean, Charlottesville is just up the highway from here, right? So is, is it a surprise to black people that that attitude persists? No. Um, is it hurtful still? Yes. Surprising? No. Paul Hunter reporting from Virginia tonight. Thanks.